So this is going to be kind of an interesting video. Uh, for those of you that don't know who Davy Crockett was, he was a pioneer. He was a really rough individual. He was not a coward by any means, and uh, he died at the Alamo. Um, this is a story of him encountering what people thought was a Bigfoot. Uh, but let me say this to you. What he encountered was a Nephilim giant and uh, his story was very interesting of how this thing warned him to leave the Alamo and, and give up this pointless battle and I want to tell you as well that in Jim Bowie his life there was a man that warned him not to go there Johnny Appleseed it's very interesting uh, from everything that I've learned about Johnny Appleseed, in a way, he was kind of like a prophet. He saw that uh, there was not going to be any food in America in the future. That's why he went around planting these apple seeds. It, it was really interesting. You guys should look up uh, Johnny Appleseed. He's really kind of a bizarre person in a lot of ways. Uh, from what I gathered, he was kind of like Merlin in, in, a, in a way. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. You, you just have to watch the, the stuff about Johnny Appleseed and read about him. But uh, both of those men, Davy Crockett and uh, Jim Bowie, were born not to go to the Alamo. And they both died there. Interestingly enough, they hated each other. They'd met each other before and they had gotten to a fight, but they died side by side fighting for the country at the end of it all. Now, answer me this. Why would these people, why would this giant warn this man not to be there? In that interference from the spiritual side? And if this is the case, the things that people call Bigfoot, or do they really have some kind of supernatural ability? Um, just very, very interesting stories. Uh, I really wanted to share this with you guys. For me, it, it's always fascinating, the, the history behind these people from hundreds of years ago and to find out the paranormal things that they went through. And uh, even Daniel Benton, he had experienced fighting a Nephilim. His um, son was attacked by one. Picked him up over its head and then slammed him on the ground. Picked him up again and went to slam him again. And uh, then on the third time, when he bent down, Daniel Boone shot it in the left eye. And he talked about he was scared to shoot it because it was holding his son. But what choice did he have? That, to me, is really interesting. But now, with Daniel Boone's story, it got a little bit more bizarre. Uh, his son had shot the Nephilim in the chest, and they acted like it was a Bigfoot. But this thing spoke to them. It legitimately spoke to them and warned them off. Uh, so, Daniel Boone puts his finger into the bullet hole where his son had shot it in the chest, trying to fill... Uh, where did the bullets go? And he said that they didn't have ribs like a normal man, that it was all one solid piece of bone down one side to protect their organs. So that to me is really interesting. And <clears throat> if they are really the offspring of the Nephilim giants, this would explain a lot. And I just wanted to make this video because we have talked about, you know, the fallen angels, their offspring, the Nephilim, and then, uh, you know, if you follow all the signs, Bigfoot are the offspring of the Nephilim, and that's really interesting to me, and I wanted to share this, these stories with you, uh, but all through history, people have talked about Bigfoot being able to speak and having, like, supernatural abilities. Even the Native Americans have talked about this. And 
in the account of Daniel Boone dealing with this Bigfoot, this offspring of the Nephilim giant, he even talked about the Native Americans, saying that these things came from the sky. So, uh, <clears throat> for me, it's really interesting, and I love this, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. All through history, anytime people spoke about what we would call today as aliens, they would have been fallen angels back then. And then they had giants. And then those giants ended up turning into the Bigfoot or Sasquatch that we talk about today. Really cool stuff. Uh, just really wanted to talk about this. Um, Cherokee, North Carolina. There's a story of a giant that is supposed to been over... Uh, I, I forget how tall, but it, it was taller than the trees. They said it, when it would walk, the trees were at its waist. And um, to me, that's really fascinating because they actually have the stone down there where the thing landed after it jumped so far and its handprint went into the stone. It had seven fingers. It's really interesting. You can look up the story behind that, but I just wanted to share these stories with you because I thought they were interesting. I think uh, <clears throat> all around the world, people have stories of giants. India has... Uh, a lot of story of giants. Ecuador, uh, they had a skeleton on a display where it was over 23 feet tall, and there's proof and evidence of giants in every country, and uh, people are starting to finally share the truth. And uh, in the mounds out west, buried in the Native American mounds, there are giants over 10 feet tall. So uh, we absolutely know that the Bible's real. We know that things are covered up constantly and I just wanted to share this with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the stories and as I find out more things like this I'll share them with you.